So in uh, Kentucky, we allow a lot of our candidates to get away with so much bullshit. Ronald, um, not Ronald Reagan, Rand Paul, right? They both have the start with the R, their first name start with an R. But um, Rand Paul, he was running for uh, U.S. Senate a few years back, and then they asked him about Harlan County. They said, well, what, what do you know that's significant about Harlan County? Um, and he couldn't mention anything. I think he said something about the mountains or something. Um, but the bloody Harlan, there's two decades, the 1970s and 19. 30s, there was bloody Harlan. There was uh, the coal miners had struck against the coal miners, and or the coal miners had struck against the coal companies, and they had uh, uh, the gun thugs were sent out by the coal companies, and so there was blood. There was blood was slain, uh, shed. So there were people were slain in Harlan County over the strike. But Rand Paul didn't know that. There wasn't really much emphasis about it. Ah, well, who gives a shit? He doesn't really know. So I, I feel like we need to start putting the pressure on our politicians, our representatives. These are people that's supposed to represent us, and we should put pressure on them to make sure that they're doing what it is that they promised to tell us. Um, so, and it's probably not that surprising that Rand Paul either maybe conveniently forgot since he's anti-union, he's very happy to break the... Um, the strikers lines just like Ronald Reagan did when he fired 12,000 air traffic controllers. So they're, they're fucking dirt bags. That's what they do. Um, Allison Lundergan Grimes, after Ashley Judd had bowed out of the U.S. Senate race for this year, she took the helm very strongly. Here's some footage of her at uh, Fancy Farm. With the highest percentage of the vote of any Democrat running for statewide office that year. She recently announced for the Democratic nomination for the U.S. Senate, maybe you received a call from her grandmother, Secretary of State Allison Lonergan Grimes. Thank you. 
And here's some footage of Matt Bevin also. In the Army. He moved to Louisville in 1999. He's worked in the financial industry, worked at national asset management, and store humanitarian projects in India and Africa, and he's chaired the board of the Louisville Area Chamber of the American Red Cross. He's announced his candidacy for the Republican nomination for the U.S. Senate, Matt Bevan. Where's Mitch? You know, the people of Kentucky have been wondering that for quite a while now. On both sides of the aisle, I'll have you know. And I'll tell you, Mitch McConnell spoke in Louisville earlier this year, and he told people he likes to brag about how Kentucky is a place where people come to end their lives. That was his exact quote. I, I'm running for U.S. Senate because I'm living proof of, and I want people to know, that Kentucky is a place for people to begin their lives, to expand their lives, and to improve their lives. Is there will be time for that next year. The bells, the bells that have been ringing, Mitch McConnell seemed to wonder what was up with that. I saw him kind of looking around. And let me tell you something, Senator, if you haven't scurried away yet. Ask not for whom the bells toll, Senator. They toll for you. Mitch McConnell is known as mudslinging Mitch because the only thing he has to run on is destroying other people. There is nothing in his 30-year history of voting that he's proud enough of to actually run on. And the people sent him packing, and we're going to send you packing. I don't intend to run to the right of Mitch McConnell. I don't intend to run to the left of Mitch McConnell. I intend to run straight over the top of Mitch McConnell and right into the U.S. Senate. And with your help, we're going to do that. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. And the people sent him packing, and we're going to send you packing. I don't intend to run to the right of Mitch McConnell. I don't intend to run to the left of Mitch McConnell. I intend to run straight over the top of Mitch McConnell and right into the U.S. Senate. And with your help, we're going to do that. Thank you. God bless you. And God bless the United States of America. And the people sent him packing, and we're going to send you packing. I don't intend to run to the right of Mitch McConnell. I don't intend to run to the left of Mitch McConnell. I intend to run straight over the top of Mitch McConnell and right into the U.S. Senate. And with your help, we're going to do that. Thank you. God bless you. And God bless the United States of America. Allison is poised and paused to take the U.S. Senate seat, but she's not as liberal as Dreamboat Ashley Judd. Ashley Judd, she was even running ads that was countering Sarah Palin when she first came in for vice president, such as hunting uh, wolves, arrow hunting of wolves. You know what this country really needs? An independent voice for Obama. I am committed to President Obama and Vice President Biden. I think he's a brilliant man. He is now able to flower more as the president I knew he could be. Ashley Judd is considering running for Senate against Mitch McConnell two years from now. now Mitch McConnell is the leader of the Republicans in the Senate. A leader who knows how to follow. I will go wherever the president wants me to go. Someone who will never forget where she came from. And it just clicked. Tennessee is home. And it just clicked. Kentucky is home. Someone who knows what's good for us. Obamacare has done so much for us right here in Tennessee. Someone who shares our values. And by the way, why are they scared of Ashley Judd? She's got no career in politics, nothing. Mitch McConnell's the head of the Republicans in the Senate. He only has a four point lead. Current polling has Mitch McConnell at 47, Ashley Judd right behind him at 43. With incumbency, with the senior position within the Republican Party, and she's already within four points of him. And she hasn't even declared word one about whether she's going to run or not. That's why Rove and McConnell are sitting in a corner shivering like, Oh no, I hope she doesn't come, I hope she doesn't come from Tennessee, come she's not Hollywood radical liberal. Come on, go kick their ass, Ashley. <laughs> that would be awesome. I got radical. I've been progressively and delightfully radical. Someone from out of state who understands us hillbillies. I don't know a lot of hillbillies who golf. Hillbillies, hillbillies, hillbillies. Her own grandmother says she's a Hollywood liberal. But isn't that what we need? 
Hi, this is Ashley Judd for Defenders of Wildlife Action Fund. When Sarah Palin came on the national scene last summer, few knew that she promotes the brutal aerial killing of wolves. Now back in Alaska, Palin is again casting aside science and championing the slaughter of wildlife. Using a low-flying plane, they kill in winter when there is no chance for the wolves to escape. Riddled with gunshots, biting at their backs in agony, they die a brutal death. Palin even proposed a $150 bounty for the severed foreleg of each killed wolf. And now she is encouraging even more aerial killing. It is time to stop Sarah Palin and stop this senseless savagery. Please join with me by going to ionpalin.org and take action now. Thank you. Ashley Judd, an Obama-following radical Hollywood liberal who's right at home here in Tennessee. Uh, I mean Kentucky. And it just clicked. Tennessee is home. And by the way, why are they scared of Ashley Judd? She's got no career in politics, nothing. Mitch McConnell's the head of the Republicans in the Senate. He only has a four-point lead. Current polling has Mitch McConnell at 47, Ashley Judd right behind him at 43. With incumbency, with the senior position within the Republican Party, and she's already within four points of him. And she hasn't even declared word one about whether she's going to run or not. That's why Rove and McConnell are sitting in a corner shivering like, Oh no, I hope she doesn't come. I hope she doesn't come from Tennessee. Oh, she's not Hollywood radical liberal. Come on, go kick their ass, Ashley. <laughs> that would be awesome. So there's um, all the candidates that's running right now. We need to learn about the candidates, and we need to put pressure on them. So the Allison Lundergan Grimes is the main Democratic, probably the one who's going to win the primary, but that's because the, the Democratic Party of Kentucky, the state's Democratic Party, has endorsed her already before the primary, which I think is illegal. They're not allowed to do that. Um, so, um, Allison is very much poised and polished to take the U.S. Senate seat, you know, but she's not as liberal as Dreamboat Ashley Judd was, and, uh, so I, I want to sort of, um, introduce more progressive issues that Allison Lundergan Grimes has not entered into the, uh, the public discourse or the conversation. So some of the other candidates that are running for U.S. Senate, Besides Allison Lundergan Grimes, so here's a list and memorize this list because these are all the choices that you have. You have uh, uh, Allison Lundergan Grimes, Greg L uh, uh, Lichty, Greg Lichty, Tom Rechtenwald, and Burl Farnsley. Okay, so you have Burl Farnsley, Allison Lundergan Grimes, and Greg Lichty, and Tom Rechtenwald. Thanks for stopping by. One more time, Burl Farnsley, Allison Lundergan Grimes, Greg Lichty, Lichty, <laughs> like a tea, iced tea, licking, licking iced tea. So Greg Lichty and then Tom Rechtenwald. Tom Rechtenwald is a businessman. Greg Lichty is a professor at UofL. Allison Lundergan Grimes is the Secretary of State and Burl Farnsley is described as a perennial candidate, which is the same designation as they gave to Gatewood Gabbarth, who would respond, well, Kentucky's got perennial problems. So you want to call me a perennial candidate, Kentucky has perennial problems. Now, you had Benny J. Smith and Edward Marksberry who were running for the Democratic primary, or at least Benny J. Smith was able to trick Philip Bailey of the NPR, um, who eventually dropped out that he was in the race. But I, if, you know, I didn't see any finance forms that was filed or any campaign forms, so I feel like he just said it. And then Philip Bailey believed him, interviewed him. Um, but the, uh, so anyways, they basically tricked fucking Philip Bailey, or maybe he's a plant, or Philip Bailey propped somebody up and interviewed him or some shit, I don't know. Lexington, you got shoot shootings uh, in urban, and uh, in inner city in Lexington, uh, Louisville, because they're getting, like, their weapon of choice is 9 meter Glocks. One issue it seems that you and, and Senator McConnell do agree on is support for industrialized hemp. Mm -hmm. uh, Senator McConnell obviously has come out for that. That, that seems to be a on a course, some sort of course in the federal government, 
But more and more I'm seeing poll numbers that show that not only Kentuckians, but a large majority of the country is leaning for legalization of marijuana, whether it's medical or recreational. Mm -hmm. on, on those two issues, where do you stand? Well, let me first say that uh, as far as industrial hemp uh, is concerned, uh, there will be more products. Well, first of all, Kentucky used to be the number one uh, industrial hemp uh, producer in the world. 